This video is kindly sponsored by CuriosityStream, the subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Hey, 42 here. We humans like to think of ourselves as being pretty smart. In fact, most of us wouldn't hesitate to call ourselves members of the most intelligent species on Earth. But what if I were to tell you that there's an organism out there that can solve complex mathematical problems more efficiently than many advanced algorithms and design city transport systems that rival and sometimes improve upon those built by the world's best city planners? This remarkable creature even earned itself a faculty position at a US college. Just in case those feats of intellect don't impress you, I should also mention that this organism can self-heal if you chop it in half. And it can do all of these remarkable things despite the fact it consists of a single cell and lacks a brain. Come to think of it, it doesn't have any organs. Like, none. But before I get onto this genuinely remarkable little critter, what exactly do we mean by intelligence anyway? It's hard to pin down a precise definition of the word, but most interpretations revolve around an organism's ability to learn and solve problems. Whilst it's true that most humans are good at both of these things, intelligence is by no means a uniquely human trait. Far from it. In fact, many of the behaviours we consider to be uniquely human, like language, culture and tool use, are not unique to us at all. Take dolphins, for example. These majestic creatures call each other by name, in the form of signature whistles, and they even use sponges to protect their beaks when foraging for food amongst sharp rocks. They've also learned that when used in small doses, pufferfish toxins can be enjoyed as a narcotic. The most rebellious dolphins have been caught passing the puffers behind the back of the proverbial bike sheds, each taking a hit before floating up to the surface to gaze dizzily at their own reflections. Having said that, don't try this at home. One pufferfish contains enough toxin to kill 30 adult humans, and there is no known antidote. There's no known antidote for stupidity either, so don't say I didn't warn you. Intelligent behaviour doesn't stop at mammals either. Octopuses can use tools, open jars, juggle hermit crabs – that's a pretty neat trick when you've got eight arms – and even play with Lego. One thing these creatures have in common is a brain. Well, nine if we're talking about the octopus, which has one big central brain and one mini brain in each arm. But intelligent behaviour has been demonstrated in organisms without any brains at all. Plants, for example, can learn to ignore stressful stimuli if they're repeatedly exposed to them without being harmed. They also communicate with each other to mount defences against insect invasions, and can even identify other plant species using sound. But whilst they don't have brains, plants are still highly complex organisms, made up of millions of different cells. What about simpler species, or even single-celled organisms. Could they possibly be seen as intelligent too? Enter the slime mould, the undisputed Einstein of the single-cell world. Slime moulds are a diverse group of amoeba-like creatures that spend most of their life cycle as a single cell. But when stressed, they can band together to form much larger multi-celled collectives that function as what you might call a superorganism, A megazord of the animal kingdom. Despite their name, these unusual organisms aren't actually moulds at all. They're protists, a fifth kingdom of life, separate from animals, plants, fungi and bacteria, that is reserved by biologists for everything we don't really understand. There's over 900 species of slime mould, and they can be found everywhere from the Antarctic to the Namib Desert. Many are invisible to the naked eye, but some can be seen as large gooey blobs that ooze from the forest floor, including the lurid yellow dog's vomit slime mould and the pearly white cacodaluna 
which directly translates to moon poo. For all their abilities, branding is not a slime mold strong suit. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. If, like me, you're into history, you definitely need to check out their content-packed history selection. But history is only a small part of their enormous collection, with content spanning science, nature, technology, society, and lifestyle. It really is the new Netflix for nerds. It's Hulu for history buffs and the Disney Plus for the scientists in all of us. Despite having an enormous amount of titles, CuriosityStream is extremely affordable. It's under $20 a year, and it's available worldwide and practically on every device. One of my favorite shows is Google and the World Brain. It's a fascinating look behind the scenes at Google's attempt to scan and digitize every single book in the world. But it raises some interesting and controversial questions about what they plan to do with all of that. So if you're anything like me and you love to learn new things, then you should check it out. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash 42 for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. You can also use my promo code 42 and you will save 25% which comes out to only $14.99 a year. Considering how unbelievably affordable it is compared to other streaming services, it's an absolute no-brainer. Perhaps the most well-studied of the slimes is Fizarin polycephalum, an enormous yellow single cell that can grow to over a foot in diameter. It contains thousands of nuclei and is able to explore its surroundings by fanning out its body in a network of finger-like tendrils, moving at speeds of up to five centimeters per hour. That might not sound very speedy to you, but it's pretty good going for a single cell. In the wild, Fizarum can be found foraging for bacteria and fungi on the damp, dark forest floor. It avoids light and dryness, and in the lab it's also been shown to have a particular penchant for oats, and oddly enough, valerian sleeping pills. By coaxing the slime mold with these tantalizing treats, scientists have been able to demonstrate some surprisingly savvy skills from this simple single-celled slime. First off, it can solve puzzles. When oat flakes are placed at the entrance and exits to a maze, the slime consistently finds the shortest path between them. This discovery earned Toshiyuki Nakagaki and his team at Hokkaido University the Ig Nobel Prize for Cognition in 2008, a subcategory of the annual awards for research that first makes you laugh, but then makes you think. Other notable prizes that year included the discovery that fleas living on dogs jump higher than those living on cats, and the observation that professional lap dancers earn higher tips when they're ovulating. You're welcome. It's this remarkable maze-solving ability that has seen slime molds outperform modern computers in some really complex tasks, notably in tackling the famous traveling salesman problem. The premise of the problem is simple. Given several cities spaced at random, what's the shortest route a salesman could take to visit them all once? Traditionally, classical computers brute force this problem, which means that the time to solve it increases exponentially as more cities are added, since computers have to test every single possible route. But scientists have found that slime molds tackle the problem in an entirely different way, meaning their solve time only increases linearly as more cities are added. Single-celled and simple they may be, but slime molds are literally teaching us humans how to make more efficient computers. Hokkaido's Slime Squad actually received another Ig Nobel Prize just two years later. This time, they'd given the slime a complicated networking problem to solve. It was challenged to create an energy-efficient yet resilient network between 36 oat flakes. That might sound like a fairly abstract task, but there was method to this OT madness. By using light to simulate geographical limitations such as mountains and lakes, 
These 36 oat flakes represented 36 main towns and cities surrounding Tokyo. The slime mold's task was simple, to build the most efficient route between the oat flakes, representing the optimal transport network possible. The central slime blob was placed in the position of Tokyo itself, meaning it was faced with a similar challenge to the one that had taken Japan's best transport engineers years to overcome. In just over a day, the slime mold had mapped out an efficient network between the oats that looked strikingly similar to Tokyo's actual railway system. Since then, the slime has been tested on many other transport systems around the world. The resulting networks shared the most similarity with the highly efficient transport routes in China, Belgium and Canada. The slime agreed less with the UK's historic train lines and seemed to think that America's interstate highway should be rerouted altogether. I'm sure it's not alone on that one. The slime's behaviour has also been used to develop mathematical models which could be used to improve the efficiency of future transport networks. In fact, similar slime models have already been put to work across all sorts of disciplines from predicting the location of ancient Roman road networks to the production of three-dimensional maps of the invisible cosmic web that underlies the very fabric of our local universe. Not bad for a brainless blob, but how does all of this actually work? I mean, this is an organism with no brain, no thoughts, no will, no intelligence, or at least not in any sense that we would recognize. How can it possibly solve complicated problems that even we humans, apparent master race of planet Earth, find challenging? To form their network, slime molds move using a system of pulsating tissue, which allows them to communicate information throughout their bodies. When they detect something they like, such as food, the cell expands in the area nearest the attractant, reducing the internal pressure of the region which causes the rest of the cell's contents to move towards it down the newly created pressure gradient. The opposite happens when slime molds encounter something they're less keen on. This is all very well in the lab, where conditions can be controlled, but natural environments tend to present a much more complicated assortment of stimuli than simply this way good, that way bad. For example, if a food source is really high quality, it might be worth foraging for in a slightly riskier environment, like one with too much light or too little moisture. Which is why slime molds have developed the ability to assess environmental trade-offs, to figure out the least bad option in a given set of circumstances, or even completely ignore stimuli they perceive as unpleasant, things like caffeine or quinine, if the payoff is big enough. This type of learning is called habituation, and it's something we humans do all the time. We quickly learn to filter out irrelevant stimuli in our lives, from the feeling of our clothes against our skin, to the constant stream of tweets from problematic politicians, and in the same way that we share newly acquired knowledge with our friends and family, the adaptive responses of a slime mold can be transferred from one slime cell to another by simply fusing the two together. That's right, these single-celled organisms are able to learn from one another. They also have memories. Despite not possessing literally any of the physical apparatus, we associate with the formation of memories. As slime molds move, they leave behind a thin layer of extracellular ooze, which allows them to recognize and avoid areas they've already explored. A bit like Hansel and Gretel's breadcrumbs, but with more slime. They also anticipate regular changes in their surroundings, even keeping track of the time at which these changes took place. We know this because when a slime cell is exposed to pulses of cold, dry air at hourly intervals, it soon learns to slow down its movement in an effort to avoid the next pulse, even when no new cold air is applied. Today, some scientists are harnessing the slime's predictable problem-solving for use in new technologies. 
slime molds have already been used to control the movements of small robots by acting as a simple biological brain for the robot's artificial body. The slime's output is a direct result of the input it receives from sensors on the machine's surface, meaning that when the robot is exposed to bright light, it tends to scuttle away into the shadows, acting just like its slimy puppeteer. But the most exciting application of slime robotics lies in the cell's ability to use not just current inputs, but also past events to decide how to behave. It's this capacity which allows the slime mold to play the piano. Well, sort of. Eduardo Miranda is a computer scientist and musician at Plymouth University. On a mission to shake up the music industry, he is sick and tired of cookie-cutter, factory-produced pop icons, and instead believes it's time for his act, the piano-playing slime mold, to top the charts. Well, something like that anyway. The contraption he's rigged up to his piano allows him to convert the sound vibrations of the strings into small electrical signals, which can then be fed to a slime-based circuit. The slime responds by changing its body shape, creating an answering electrical signal, which triggers some of the electromagnets above the piano strings, causing them to vibrate. In this way, Miranda and the slime mold are able to duet. With each consecutive phrase Miranda plays, the slime modifies its response based on both the most recent musical melody and the electrical signals of the previous notes that were played to it. The resulting composition is spooky and otherworldly, but the slime's responsive tinkling has a strangely musical quality. Beyond creating these slimy symphonies, the cell's ability to remember the amount of charge that has previously passed through it could have much wider reaching applications. The slime in Miranda's circuit is effectively acting as a memory resistor, an electronic component that's able to retain data without a power supply. Memory resistors can store more data than today's solid state storage technologies in a smaller space whilst using less energy. Integrating slime based components into our computers, laptops, and phones could satisfy our demand for data whilst using smaller devices and less power. And there's more. The synapses in our brains that allow impulses to pass between neurons can be seen as biological memory resistors. Therefore, it's not inconceivable that integrating slime molds into future electronics could allow us to develop robots with similar processing capabilities to the human brain. And since they'd be slime-based, they'd also be self-assembling and self-repairing. Like all biological systems, slime molds have evolved their impressive problem-solving prowess over millions of years of natural selection. Some might argue that the slime mold is simply following the laws of chemistry and physics to perform well in their chosen environments. But at the end of the day, aren't we all? Whilst it was admittedly a bit of a publicity stunt, the unique intelligence of slime molds led to one of them being granted a faculty position at Hampshire College in Massachusetts. The position came complete with a dedicated office and several student research assistants who were tasked with helping their slime mold boss solve complex political issues like border policy, offshore drilling, and drug regulation. Seriously. Our human-centric view of the world has undoubtedly constrained our appreciation of the accomplishments of other species. Yet, intelligent behaviour can be seen across the tree of life, and recognising it as such could provide us with inspiration for revolutionary new tools, transport, and technologies. Thanks for watching. Check out my new podcast, Random Interesting Facts, available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Link in the description below. Thanks.